What's going on hikers? In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven beginner mistakes to avoid whenever you're hiking or backpacking. Our mission here on this channel is to help you increase your quality of life while you're out on trail. And let's start with mistake number one. It is washing your down gear or articles of clothing like anything else. Typically, you just throw it in the washer, your clothes are all stinky whenever you get home, wash it, dry it, you are good to go. But down is a little bit different. It's an insulation from goose or duck. I have a couple examples here to show you. Three to be exact, a ghost whisperer that has down inside. Um, it's just an insulated puffy jacket, we call it. I also bought these pants. Uh, I'll list all the gear that I'm talking about in today's video in the description if you want to check it out and do a little more research or buy some of it. But these are some down pants, got down inside to help insulate you. And then lastly, I wanted to show you my top quilt. Now this is a 27 degree top quilt. It's made by Western Mountaineering and it's gonna keep you super warm, but if I just throw it in the washer and wash it like any of my other things, um, it's gonna kind of ruin and flatten out that down. So there's special detergents that you use in order to wash it. Um, and you should definitely read the directions on each specific piece of gear to make sure you're following them correctly. Our second mistake involves sleeping pads. Now, if you're a hammock camper, you're probably using an underquilt, but if you use a sleeping pad, this applies to you as well. This is a Nemo Alpine version tensor. And this is basically like their winter version. And the mistake is not knowing how to use or not bringing with you a patch kit. Um, sometimes that can mean the difference between surviving a night and not because if you're out there and it's really cold you need the insulation that this is helping you with in order to keep the cold from the ground um, from sucking all your warmth while you're out on trail so if you look in here Nemo they're smart about this they put a little patch kit inside of the stuff sack so if you bring the stuff sack with you you'll have this as well and it has directions in the little Ziploc. Usually it has like an alcohol wipe in order to clean the pad, whatever spot that has a hole in it. And uh, then a little adhesive and it says to let it dry for 24 hours. But if you need to patch it in the field, uh, you might be able to find an alcohol wipe in your first aid kit if your pad doesn't come with one of these. Just make sure that you at least bring a patch kit with you um, and you do a little bit of research, watch a YouTube video or something like that to learn how to do it because I'm serious. If it's 30 degrees out there and you're laying there and you're just expecting your sleeping bag to keep you warm, you're laying on the ground, you could really, really get hypothermia. <laughs> okay, I can't understate it enough. And uh, summertime, it might just be uncomfortable because you're laying on the ground, but fall and winter, that could be cold. So make sure you know how to use a patch kit and make sure you bring it with you if you're using a pad. This is my tent, my two person tent and it is a Sea to Summit um, Telos TR2. You can see it there. I've talked about this tent a number of times on the channel and I like it because it's a two person and I bring it for one person because mistake number three in today's list is taking the wrong size tent, particularly a one person tent. <laughs> well, I was speaking for myself, a one person tent for one person or a two person tent for two people yikes i can do the one person but two person is so much more comfortable uh, it's still a little bit tight with one person in it but a three person tent shout out to my lovely wife she's behind the camera right now but whenever we go backpacking together we don't take a two person tent i have a number of them but i leave this one at home great tent does fantastic freestanding and everything but i take a three person tent so i would consider whenever you get your tent Make sure you get in there. If you're taking two people, stick two pads in there and see how they fit. Uh, we tried to do this with a tent on a recent trip and we found out that the pads <laughs> literally wouldn't fit in there. So there's no way that the both of us would fit in the two person tent. So just test it out at home and make sure you're taking the right size tent that fits your needs. I know what you're thinking. We got a problem here. He keeps showing all this gear, but backpacking gear gets very, very expensive. How can I save some money? Where can I find the best deal? Where does he shop at? I'll tell you, it is our video sponsor, backcountry.com. Huge selection of all your outdoor gear needs, not just backpacking. In fact, last time I was on their site, I ordered a 12 person car camping tent. Now I didn't know really which one to get, 
Uh, so I had some silly questions that I needed to ask, and that's how I matched up with one of their gearheads. I live chatted with them. Or if you're more comfortable, you can just call and have a conversation over the phone. But I went and I clicked on the hiking camp, and that matched me up with someone who is an expert in that field, and they answered my questions. I got my order, shipped out, everything turned out fantastic. If you want to save some money, use my code JeremiahBC15 for 15% off of your first order. Some exclusions do apply. Backcountry.com, a huge selection of all kinds of different outdoor gear products, especially your hiking, camping, and backpacking. So make sure to check them out. We'd like to thank Backcountry for continuing to support the channel and make these videos possible for you guys. These are the Hoka Speedgoat 4s. They are my go-to trail runner, and they're gonna help us with mistake number four, which is not wearing your shoes before you hit the trail. I'll tell you a quick story here. My wife, we bought uh, a pair of boots for her to take backpacking, and we went on a day hike, and whenever she put them on at the house, everything was great. But then after a day of hiking, all of a sudden they were too tight. And thankfully, we had tried them out before we hit the Smokies and backpacked across these mountains because if we had taken them out there, her feet would have swelled up and they would have been too tight and it would have been totally uncomfortable, maybe lose a toenail, who knows. But long story short, make sure you try out your shoes before you hit the trail, especially if it's gonna be a multi-day because as you walk, your feet are gonna swell up and you may have to size up in your shoes. Mistake number five. This has to do with your trekking pole. Uh, this trekking pole in particular, it is adjustable and I like to keep it on 54 inches. It'd be better if it's 56, but I can't find a trekking pole quite tall enough. Mistake number five is your trekking pole not being set to the right length. Now, some people like to adjust them when they go up or downhill, but really, whenever you're standing, it should be at a 90 degree angle. Now, I like mine a little bit taller uh, but I'm a tall guy. Um, if you don't adjust them to the right height, it's just not as comfortable, not as efficient. It's not going to kill anything. Some people even use them like a little walking cane, and that's fine to do whatever fits your needs. But if you want to get technical, they are made to put your hand up through the strap so you don't dislocate your thumb if you fall down. You can still catch yourself and then adjust it to where that right angle is at your elbow, and you'll be trekking away. Mistake number six is all about the right size backpack and the adjustments that are going to make it comfortable on you. Now my baby backpack right now is the Osprey Atmos 65 liter and this backpack I bought the right size for me. You can go get measured whenever you're going to pick out a backpack but uh, first thing I'll show you is you can adjust how tall the shoulder straps are going to be on you. Like this is basically gonna cradle your body and become part of you while you're backpacking, but it has sliders so you can adjust the height of the backpack depending on your torso length. Um, a few points of contact here that are gonna be super important for you to adjust is the hip belt. It's gonna take like 80, 85% of the load. And the hip belt, this one just buckles and you can cinch it in to your desired fit. Also your shoulder straps, you're gonna pull those down snug in this is only going to be like 10 percent of your weight it shouldn't be bearing too much on your shoulders um, that'll get really uncomfortable and it's going to give you a headache by stressing your neck and shoulders uh, and then a couple more you have your sternum strap that its job is to pull the load away from your shoulders so we'll adjust that right there and then lastly a lot of backpacks have these load lifters and they're right up here next to my neck and what those do basically is shift the backpack towards you or away from you. And if you dial all that in to the perfect fit for you, this thing's gonna be so comfortable, you're gonna forget that you're wearing it. And then whenever you take it off, you're gonna be like, oh, it just feels like something's missing. What is it? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's you being comfortable zoned in with your backpack. Mistake number seven, keeping comfortable here. We wanna stay cool and comfy, okay? That is using the wrong temperature sleeping bag or quilt or under quilt, whatever your sleep system happens to be in the wrong temperature. Now, I mentioned this earlier, this is a 27 degree top quilt. And 
I'm not sure it'll really keep me that warm at 27 degrees, but I'll tell you what, it's gonna burn me up if it's like 60 degrees and I'm sleeping out there. It's just not comfortable. You have to be conscious of the gear that you purchase. Now this thing is perfect for the fall. Um, it's gonna keep me nice and toasty warm, but make sure you're checking your temperatures whenever you're headed out to the trail. I do not wanna take a 15 degree sleeping bag in 70 degree weather at night. And I also don't wanna do the opposite, right? I don't wanna to freeze to death. I don't wanna take this thing if I know it's gonna be zero degrees out, cause it's just not, it's not built for that. So you have to buy the right pieces of gear for whatever your trek is going to be. I know I left some stuff out, so comment below and tell me some other beginner mistakes that you've made, you've seen others make, or you think that would be important to share on the channel. If you wanna buy some gear, check out backcountry.com. Link's in the description along with my code for a discount. And uh, give me one of these, subscribe to the channel, and kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next one.